Hi, I'm Carrie Nicholson, and I am hosting this evening's conversation with Drew Hayden Taylor, and this is Drew Hayden Taylor. Hello. So, how have you been, Drew? Overworked and overpaid. Oh, that's horrible. That's, that's horrible. Theater. I, yes, yes, some, for some, for some, but hey. that's great. So what have you been doing since I last met you last year? Oh, uh, let's see. During, the, during COVID, I've actually found COVID to be very, very, um, giving me lots of time to work. So in the last two years, I've done one uh, documentary television series. We've done, uh, we're working on a one-hour documentary for CBC. I've written one novel. I've written two plays. I wrote one collection of uh, creative nonfiction for a book. I've done a bunch of essays for uh, Globe and Mail and TVO, and um, been to Mexico three times. Um, I don't know, whatever, whatever else, laundry. Laundry. Eventually, it mm. comes down to laundry. It, come, it? always comes yeah. down to yeah. laundry. With all that wonderful COVID time, how are you feeling about end of COVID? Let's be optimistic. Let's say there's going to be an end of COVID and it's going to return back to all the other stuff. Well, not for a while, because as I said, I wrote two plays and I'm uh, in the process of just fine tuning them and trying to sell them. The thing is, as I'm sure you know, as a, as a theater expert and raconteur, um, <laughs> A lot of theaters are basically getting up to speed and they have like two years backlog. Yeah. Right? The stuff that was shut down and almost every theater company has this next year booked already and planning. So I've got all this stuff ready to go, but I can't get anybody interested for at least another year, year and a half. So uh, it, uh, I'm, with all that being done, of course, um, a lot of my other stuff, my, my old catalog is still has a certain amount of popularity. Uh, Cottagers and Indians is being done all over the place and one of my plays um, the biography of Sir John A is being done in uh, Regina and lots of fun stuff like that. I'm doing a lot of zoom work talking with people about uh, native theater and stuff like that and I'm thinking of writing a book about uh, my experiences in Canadian theatre and the development of Indigenous theatre. That sounds like a perfect thing because I think that's something that's come out over the last two years is this increased interest and I'm sure everyone is not jumping on the bandwagon bandwagon but but they're realizing they need to get up to speed and and I'm sure someone like you is going to be in huge demand to well, provide that kind of resource. I always find it really interesting because yes my stuff is very popular. I get I get done a lot. I think after Thompson and Red Sisters I'm the, I'm the most produced uh, indigenous playwright in Canada. And I, you know people ask me why that is and it's hard to say. I think um, I I don't uh, push the envelope. I, I'm, I'm quite innocuous as a writer. I'm not angry I guess is the best way to put you're it. Funny. You're, you're funny. You're funny. Some might argue. <laughs> All my work, except for the four comedies I've done, um, and it, we're talking 20, 23 plays, I never, start, I never try to be funny. A lot of my plays, one of them, um, Someday, which is about the scoop up, is, has been described when it was produced in Montreal as, as a comedy about mothers and daughters. And it's like, I didn't write it as a comedy, I just wrote it as a drama with lots of humor. And life can be funny, so I think your plays resonate in a very authentic way, and life is funny. So I think that's what we're reacting to: is that reality of the strange humor that life brings. It's yeah, it's fun. It's easy to do. I'm just now, I'm in the final rewrite of a, a new novel that's coming out this uh, this winter, my 35th book, and uh, it's it's a horror novel. But there's still lots and lots of humor in it. And the thing is, as I say, I don't sit down and say, I'm going to write a funny line. It flows organically from the characters in the situation. But you see, this, you see the sense of humor in something. Like, oh, you have a huge sense of humor. Um, knock, I, on, I, knock on for Micah. I've chatted with you enough <laughs> to recognize that, that I can't help but every time I hear something new, I'm going, oh, and it's not a dread, oh, what is he going to drag me through? It's yeah. more of a, oh, what a great ride we're going to have. Yeah, 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 yeah. The ups and downs, uh, you know, it's like the, the, the Greek masks, you know, tragedy and comedy. Um, they're both sides of the same coin, basically. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
it's it's quite a fun job. Yeah. Oh, I. I it beats working in a cubicle. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not going to argue with you on that one. That's. Is there anything that you're looking at trying that you haven't tackled yet? Um, I I find out in June if I'm going to be directing a movie. Awesome. Based on one of my plays, one of my comedies called The Berlin Blues. Uh, a producer read it, liked it, and said you should turn it into a a feature film. I adapted the script in uh, the play into a script, and we're waiting to find out if we've got funding. If we've got funding, we're going to be shooting in August, September. That's that's awesome, and that's awesome, and that's you've got tons of experience with film and TV. Um, my own journey through that over the last years has made me very appreciative of the time and the complexity of putting that whole medium together. Yeah, so it's, it's a different animal, but I'm looking forward to taming it. And you will. As we, like say, a, as we say on my reserve, grazie. It'll be like a rodeo ride, I bet. Yes. <laughs> That's and that, I think we should end on that note. <laughs>